So with that, Clay, uh, good morning, and uh, I'll take a few comments from you. Yeah, yeah. To start off with, congratulations uh, to Kadani and the women's soccer team. Big win, but a hundredth win for Kadani. Uh, that that's a that's a milestone. What an unbelievable, fabulous coach, and and so glad that we have him here at USC and what he's doing with our women's soccer team. So, Kadani, congratulations. Um, you know, it's been a really productive week uh, for us uh, as, as a football team um, to be able to get uh, two practices in uh, as well as three meetings. Um, you, can, you can really see uh, how the last eight weeks uh, of investment, both in the strength and conditioning, as well as our position meetings and walkthrough for our younger players, have helped them. Um, they are further advanced uh, than even that I thought they would be from a strength standpoint, but as well as a knowledge standpoint uh, that I thought they, they really played clean football. Uh, and I thought our whole team uh, really practiced well together, practiced fast, practiced professional. Um, and, and we came out uh, gaining uh, a, a lot of advancement with our team, but also um, stayed safe and stayed healthy, really came out of two practices with, with no injuries. Uh, so we're really excited uh, going into this Saturday. It's our first full pad practice. It will be one of our eight tackle opportunities. There'll be about 50 live reps uh, that you'll get to get to see today uh, and really see uh, where we stand after a good week uh, of work. You know, um, So we're looking forward to getting out there. I know our kids uh, and our coaches are really excited. Saturday, midday on grass, uh, the sun is shining. Uh, couldn't be any better. Look forward to seeing y'all out there. So with that, I'll take any questions that you have. Okay, again, a reminder, uh, raise your hand if you do have a question. Uh, we'll start with uh, Ryan Young. Good morning, Clay. Good morning. I know it's been two uh, non-padded practices, but we won't talk to you again for another week. Uh, can you yeah. give us just your early assessment of the young quarterback so far? Yeah, you know, Brian, it's always hard, you know, when you're basically uh, it, it, not in pads. But, I, you know, I, I went in telling the, the kids, every, every kid in that room, uh, the quarterback room walked in their, their position meeting room and just sat down with them and had a real conversation that, you know, right now for especially the young quarterbacks, it's about trying to improve each and every day not worrying about, oh gosh, what did I do on that pass? How many reps am I getting? Uh, did I get the first team rep, second team reps, third team rep, fourth team rep? But just trying to get comfortable within the system uh, and doing three things, being great decision makers, uh, being getting the ball out on time, uh, because obviously the college game is a little bit faster than the high school game and, and, and the timing of getting that ball out and then being an accurate passer. And, and both of them have shown um, some sparks of brilliance and, and, and both of them have shown some uh, just coming out of high school, which is, which is, you know, is going to happen, uh, but have been really pleased of their sense of urgency. Reminds me a lot of Keaton uh, when he got here, just their sense of urgency to, uh, to, um, uh, to be great. Uh, to put in the extra work that they've done, uh, uh, not only in the film room, uh, but how they're really taking command out on the field. So uh, really positive for, for both of them in the first two days. Now uh, they get some live bullets today. They, you know, they're going to be put in some situations where um, they, they've got pass rushers all around them. Uh, obviously, when you go against T.O., and what he does, uh, you're, you're going to – it's not the easiest day for a freshman quarterback. So it'll be neat to see it. Y'all will get to see it too. So um, they, uh, I expect that there's going to be those shots of brilliance that you go, wow, that, that it really excites you. And then there'll be some times you'll be like, come over here, bud. Stay beside me here for a second. Let's talk what just happened. Um, so I, I think there'll be a little bit give and take. And like with all freshman quarterbacks, there's, there'll be some growing pains. And then uh, any update on the guys we did not see on Tuesday, Drake Jackson, Chris Steele, Raylan Goforth, and then Greg Johnson, who was out there but not active. Yeah, it'd still be the same. Uh, like I said, we've got, uh, like I said in my first press conference, uh, we have a couple guys that uh, will not be with us because of health and safety protocols that we're hoping to get back in the near future. Thanks. Okay, we'll go next to Antonio. Clay, I, I know it's only been two practices and there's been no pads, but it seems like Keontae Ingram is pretty elusive out there. What, what have you seen from him? Uh, 
uh, so far? Yeah, you know, I think both newcomers uh, I've been really impressed with, uh, as well as our vets. You, you can tell the, the competitiveness in the room and the talent uh, within the room. Um, you know, what I've seen from both Keontae as well as Brandon Campbell uh, has been um, a unique running skill set. Um, they have a great feel, uh, a great patience uh, as runners. Um, they both are extremely explosive but I've been impressed with their patience uh, in the lane, letting things set up and then exploding. Obviously, we're not in full pads. This will be a great, um, a great uh, example today. Team run is live or team segment is live today. Um, so we're looking forward to that. But I, I have been thoroughly impressed, just like uh, just like Vavai and Steven uh, and our other backs. They catch the ball out of the backfield so well. I mean, it's just natural ball skills. Um, so, uh, you know, it's been great to see Keontae. He is what we expected him uh, to be, uh, which is a fabulous athlete, a hard worker, blue collar worker, uh, and really has just come in with a lot of respect, humbleness, and hungry uh, to be a contributor uh, on this team. So very proud for him right now. And uh, now it's about just him being consistent through the next 13 practices. Okay, uh, Mark Culkin. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Good morning. Um, again, you know, common comment, only two days, but what have you seen different with your O-line uh, under with Clay McGuire coaching them compared to maybe previous camps? Well, I think anytime that you get um, a new position coach, <clears throat> he has his own style. Um, uh, I've been very fortunate to be around some good O-line coaches in, in my time here, and Clay is one of those guys. Um, he, he has his own style. I think he's a great um, a great teacher. Um, I think that, uh, you know, even during practice, I've been impressed with him making corrections on the run. Uh, when he sees it, he has great vision, uh, almost like a coordinator's mind. He, he can see everything, which I've been very, very impressed with. Uh, obviously, introducing some new techniques and fundamentals that he believes in that I think will benefit all our guys, especially uh, in pass protection and, and run blocking. So, you know, everybody's different. And, you know, I, I think that I'm, I'm just – very happy that we get, you know, really, gosh, Ramani, 15 practices in, in spring ball, 25 practices in training camp, uh, you know, 40 total practices to be able to go out there under his tutelage. And, uh, but I've been impressed the first two days, Mark, really happy. And then as far as an energy level, um, you know, Todd Orlando and the defense always seems to have that presence. Are you, are you sensing mm -hmm. that on the offensive side of the ball, trying to, to match that intensity? Yeah. You know, I know you weren't out there Thursday. I thought Tuesday defensively was a real, and usually that happens on the first day. Uh, when the, you, you end up talking, you know, getting position meetings and seeing the picture and then walking through at a slow pace, uh, and then things go 100 miles an hour. And defensively, usually you're ahead further than offensively. But I liked how the offense came out Thursday. I know you didn't get to see that, but uh, it, I, I liked their energy. Uh, I thought team run was excellent. Uh, and, you know, uh, I think you'll enjoy today. Uh, I really do. Um, I, I, the first period should be a lot of fun. Uh, that that you'll see uh, that'll create a create some great energy the kids are excited about a very competitive drill will do and hopefully that carries out all the way uh through practice uh but uh i, I like uh i like the competitiveness of our team but i love how they're mark I, I love how they're playing together right now they're protecting each other uh but they're competing at a high level and it, it was really neat to see after thursday's practice which was ultra competitive how they came up, uh, adapt each other up, loved each other up afterwards. You can tell all the team things that we did in that eight week cycle, all the mat drills, team mat drills that were done together, the shared suffering that was kind of done together. Uh, these kids have really become even closer uh, than they, they were last year, which is neat to see. Um, and now it's about keeping that competitiveness and that team orientedness uh, throughout these next 13 practices. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Eric McKinney. So without Ishmael up there and then Brandon didn't go on Tuesday, mm -hmm. what, what are you hoping to get kind of from the interior of the <clears throat> line by, by the end of spring? And then what have you seen so far from, from some of those young guys? 
Yeah, it, we're, we're expecting to get Brandon back for about half a practice today and, and really uh, acclimate him in. He, he's um, had a good week of conditioning and strength. Um, we're going to acclimate him into some individual drill work today uh, and, um, and advance him further. But I, I take what it's been able to do. It's been able to give a couple young kids the opportunity to grow. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention one name, and I think Theo mentioned it the other day from what he told me, um, a kid that had a great – eight week cycle and really a great two practices, Jamar Sakona. Uh, he, he, as a young person, he really has got a sense of urgency right now to be a contributor on this football team. Um, and have really liked his maturity, um, uh, the mental maturity that he's brought to the table and his work ethic. Um, the, you know, it's also given the opportunity for a Jay Toya, uh, to be able, who we feel is, is going to be a really good player here over time and, and giving him the opportunity to get some valuable reps. So, um, you know, there's always a silver lining uh, when you lose an ish for a period of time and, and uh, getting Brandon back. Uh, this is one of those silver linings to get what we feel is really two good young players, some quality work. Uh, Ryan Young. I know we didn't see Thursday, but uh, how much should we read into the fact that Cortland forward took all the left tackle reps on Tuesday? Um, I think Corlin's doing a great job, Brian, uh, and I think Casey's doing a wonderful job. We, we kind of just went the first two days and, and kind of primarily looked um, at Cortland and Casey at left and, and um, Jalen and Jonah at right and uh, being able to look at that as too deep. We, we also um, have Caden Stevens uh, that's going at uh, that's working in there at the right tackle position also uh, with the threes and uh, uh, it, it was good to see those kids um, battle and compete. I think Corlin had as good a uh, off-season winter cycle as anybody on our football team. Um, and, and obviously, to be able to see um, Casey uh, really gain some strength over that eight-week cycle, you know, uh, unbelievably talented growing into this six-foot-nine, 317-pound body. He's really learning – how important core strength is and being able to be able to move that type of mass. Uh, but I was really impressed with both kids uh, at that left side uh, last week. Uh, but um, uh, they, they've had a good week now. Live bullets fly today and uh, there'll be a lot of moving parts. And I would expect there to be some good and some corrections uh, today. But I, I look forward to it. I like I like both of their attitudes uh, that they brought to the table this week. Right? We were able to see Casey last year. Can you kind of give us a sense for how much he's grown since he got to campus? Not physically grown, obviously. Yeah. He was already big, but developed. Yeah. Have you ever seen, uh, I know some people talk about that. Have you ever seen that baby deer that just kind of, he, he's tried to learn how to get his feet up underneath him and kind of all over the place? That that was Casey when he first came in. You just saw this unbelievable, it's the biggest Bambi deer you've ever seen uh, out, out there. Uh, but you see this unique talent. I mean, just unique length, talent, and athleticism and size um, that is very rare. It's kind of um, uh, very similar, two different maybe body types, uh, but the size of the man, if you remember Zach Banner and, and kind of how hard it is to get around him in, in pass protection, just because of his overall length and size and being able to move for that big a man, both, both Zach and Casey uh, were uh, high school basketball players uh, that I thought really helped. Um, and, you know, Casey's upside is so, and ceiling is so high. I mean, he's so far away from what he's going to be uh, right now. Uh, it's ridiculous. He's just trying to get better, a little bit better each and every day. Uh, but I can see him help contributing to this football team next year, just based on what I've seen uh, over this spring cycle. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Ryan Karchi. <clears throat> hey, Clay, obviously you haven't had Chris Steele out there, um, mm -hmm. but – and I know Todd was talking a little bit about Josh Jackson's transition to cornerback, but how do you feel just generally about the depth at that position? Yeah, you, you know, right now uh, we've got necessarily five kids that are working uh, right now, um, you know, with Chris, the possibility of getting six out there. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, I think Jaden Williams, Jaden Williams has made some great advancements under, under um, Dante uh, in 
and his game and his fundamentals and technique. Uh, you know, obviously moving Josh over, uh, you can see his athleticism and his overall speed uh, at the at the position. He has good length. I mean, being a six foot kid, uh, but you know, even on Thursday. Uh, over the first two practices, we've tried to go by him a couple of times and he's right in the hip. Uh, and that that speed shows with Josh. Jaden's physicality shows um, two two younger players that are really growing into the position with Adonis and Dorian and Dorian Hewitt. Uh, and then you got two experienced players um, that I think bring unique size, speed and explosiveness and experience in ITS and Chris Steele. You know, so uh, we're working six kids there right now, um, you know, obviously uh, excited about getting some more freshmen uh, in uh, some really talented freshmen at, the, at, at possible positions there. Uh, you look you, you look at um, Prophet Brown coming in, Sierra Wright coming in, uh, Jalen, uh, Jalen Smith coming in, uh, that all could be corners or nickels. Um, you know, so you know, we, we play a five DB system, especially in this league. And sometimes it's six DBs, depending on if we've got to go to our dime package. So uh, it's very, very important to have quality depth uh, at that because they're going to be asked to do a lot uh, throughout the season. And you look up, sometimes we have six DBs on the field. And given how just unique Talano was at that safety spot, how much do you assume that You'll just have to change your defense a little bit to alter just whoever steps into that position. Well, it's always hard to fill the shoes of a Talanoa. I mean, he's all, all American and, and very unique and special player. And uh, whoever gets him uh, in the NFL is going to uh, win the lottery, uh, I think, because uh, they're going to get such a quality person and player and leader. Um, but, you know, to be able, we really saw that and invested in it. Um, uh, being able to bring a Zavion Offord, who has a, a you know has a year of college under his belt, uh, as well as signing you know three uh, freshmen uh, that I you know whether it's Samarian, uh, whether it is uh, Anthony, uh, whether it's uh, Kalen, uh, that I think uh, I, I can't wait to watch today. You know, so you got the opportunity to mix and match some kids in there that I, I think are talented, and in some in some areas. They, they have a, um, uh, even greater skill set in some areas of, of, of Talanoa. They're very athletic men. Um, and so we'll mix a match there uh, over these 40 practices, uh, as well as, you know, I, I thank God every day that I think he's the hidden secret is Chase Williams. You know, you're, you're, here's a kid that has a lot of experience and kind of got a chip on his shoulder, uh, has had a great spring. Uh, and I can't wait to watch him. He's had two great first practices. I'm looking forward to watching today. Um, and, and he gets overshadowed. So but the, he's a kid that's got a lot of experience for us and, and looking forward to watching him play. Uh, we'll go back to Antonio. Clay, I, I know Nick Figueroa was rehabbing the other day. What's the issue that's limiting him right now? Uh, yeah, he had shoulder surgery after the season. Uh, uh, you know, he had a torn labrum, um, you know, uh, partially torn labrum in the shoulder that uh, he, and credit to him, played through the season with. Uh, and then we immediately got fixed right after the season. Usually that's about a six month rehab. So we had a sense of urgency to get that done immediately after the season and, and should be medically cleared by the middle of summer. Okay, we'll go to uh, Haley Sawyer. Hi, um, in what ways has the new strength and conditioning coach and um, program really gotten the guys ready despite having to prepare and, you know, the era of COVID-19? Yeah, um, you, you know, during, during COVID, obviously extremely hard um, to what you could do because you didn't have the full use of, of uh, inside gymna gymnasium uh, gym. You know, so we had to build an outdoor gym um, and it always limits you a little bit to what you can do now being inside in cohorts, but being able to use all the equipment, the racks, the uh, the things that you can do total body. I've been really impressed with Coach Steiner and how he's built our core strength, uh, how he's built our soft tissue health. Uh, we have not seen a lot of soft tissue injuries over this spring cycle. Knock on wood, that continues, but uh, he, he does a masterful job 
of building full body strength, especially core strength with these young kids, especially our big men, uh, hip flexibility, mobility, hip strength, groin strength. Um, and we just had the hamstring health. We just haven't seen a lot of soft tissue injuries, uh, which I've been extremely pleased with um, this spring um, in, in training. Uh, and, you know, and now the maintenance, not only are these kids, you know, position meeting and, and going to practice, but the maintenance that they're getting Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays within that strength and conditioning, we're maintaining our strength as well as that soft tissue health. So I've been thoroughly impressed with his system. Uh, I, I think we've taken a stride forward. Uh, because of what he's brought in, brought in within that system, uh, and um, look forward to seeing it continue. Okay, I don't see any more questions for you, Clay, and I know you do have to get going here, so we appreciate you joining us. A couple of reminders to the media, we do pra practice this morning, uh, 11.25, we'll be down there at the gates, um, same uh, setup as we had on Tuesday. Um, Monday is uh, Elijah Griffin's Pro Day starting at 10 a.m. I've sent information out about that. And then our next uh, Zoom presser will be on Tuesday at 8 a.m. with uh, Kerry Colbert, Coach Colbert, and uh, Drake London. So with that, uh, we wish you all a good day. Hope we see you out there uh, this morning. And um, again, Clay, thanks for joining. Yep. See you soon, guys. Take care.